What's up guys and welcome to the very first episode of the ICRS Plus Helmet Hands-On Review. I'm your host Ambrose Dodson and CEO of Intelligent Cranium Helmets. I'm bringing this initial review to you from the comfort of my home due to COVID reasons and also because I wanted to ensure that this very first review I wanted to thank everyone who has supported us thus far uh, earlier on and currently right now we've been putting in a lot of work uh, my team and um, I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart and let you know that um, I really appreciate the support and uh, we're here for you guys and um, yeah so let's uh, jump right into it um, so where we're gonna start is uh, at the beginning um, with this helmet which is where we started initially with our development. Um, and then we're gonna switch over to a full walkthrough of the ICRS Plus helmet, uh, the ins and outs, and just uh, to really cover the design for those who may not be completely aware of everything that we are offering with this helmet and uh, just how easy it will be to, um, to service, okay? Um, then from there, we're gonna go to uh, the system. We're gonna pull the system up and then we are gonna to go to the, to the heart of this review, which everyone has been waiting for. And that is uh, with this first episode, we are going to cover our AI voice commands. Okay, that is one of the first things that we got functioning um, among other things that we have functioning. Uh, so this video review, again, will be to cover a full walkthrough of the design and the helmet itself and to touch on one of our uh, key functions of our helmet, which is our AI and voice commands. Okay, so this helmet to my right is an ILM helmet. It's a pretty cheap helmet. It's about $50 that we purchased off of Amazon. And um, so this is where we started. Um, we purchased this and a number of other helmet models uh, as we were going through from our inception to where we are today. Um, so here you can see, hopefully you can see this, uh, probably not, but we do have some speakers uh, embedded in here when we're testing out some of the audio. And um, here you can see on the inside, you can see that back up in there. Uh, we did uh, cut out the back part of the foam so that way we can get uh, initial boards in there and also be able to drill these holes for these cameras. So that way we could test out placement angle uh, and get the right location for the cameras. So that way when we do our stitching, everything is seamless and um, working the way that it should. Okay. Um, that's pretty much, you know, all we did. I mean, we, you know, we did some other things with the helmet, but uh, in comparison from this to this helmet, which you'll, you'll see uh, to just cover uh, some standard uh, features, okay? Uh, here on this helmet, of course, you already have the the, um, the front vent here, and you have the same thing with the ICRS Plus helmet. You have a front vent, which opens um, slightly different than that vent, but um, you can see that it opens and closes, okay? And then also we have the upper channel vents here, we have the same thing here, but we actually added one additional channel that a helmet like this one doesn't have. We have three vents here. Um, one is here in the center. It has a uh, slider to go up and down. And then we also have the two vents here, um, the left and the right, which also have sliders to go up and down for more airflow. Okay. And um, with this helmet, um, with this, this cheaper model helmet, okay, this helmet does allow the air to flow into the helmet, but it has exhausts that come out the back, okay? With some of the higher end helmets, okay, you have, which is what we are designed our helmet um, to, to mimic, okay, is these channels when they go in, okay, there's no exhaust vent, okay? There's no exhaust vent for the air that comes in the air, which is which forces the air to go in through the vents and then go around the back side of the head and then come out uh, at the base uh, of the helmet on the rear. Okay, 
which is going to help you cool uh, the, your entire head, essentially, okay? Another additional thing that's different um, between uh, our premium helmet and something like this, um, this helmet does not have any side uh, lower air vents, okay? You can see that, no side lower air, air vents, okay? Ours does, okay? We want to make sure that with the design, you can see this here, this is one of the air vents, and we have the same thing on the right side of the helmet. But we wanted to make sure that uh, with everything that there was proper airflow uh, coming into the helmet and for the rider's head, okay? Um, the last, you know, pretty standard feature that we can use to compare these two before I get rid of this helmet is the visor, okay? Uh, this helmet came with uh, two visors, a clear visor and a tinted visor, okay? Uh, our helmet, um, the ICRS Plus, which is our top of the line model helmet, will come with a photochromic visor as standard. Um, when you get to the lower end models, those models will uh, come with either a standard clear visor, a standard tinted visor, or if you want to, you will have the option to select and upgrade the standard visor to a photochromic visor. So um, you're, you're not stuck with just one or the other. You will have the option to, to upgrade, okay? So in terms of comparisons, again, uh, that's it for uh, these two models here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this helmet out of the way, okay? Because we're pretty much done with that. Now, Let's go ahead and get to the rest of what this helmet is designed for, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do um, before I go too deep into the rest of the design, um, so you may be wondering, so here uh, is our dev board that we have we've been working with and designing around, okay? Uh, for the purposes of this video only, so that way you can see and you can hear uh, the responses and um, everything that we worked on with our coding. Um, we do have a uh, USB to audio adapter here that uh, you'll see a little bit later on once we plug in our uh, speaker. And then uh, we have some USB dongles to control the system. Um, HDMI uh, input, okay, which will feed to this monitor uh, to my left on uh, your right. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I wanted to cover that and let you guys know that that's why some of this looks the way that it does. But once we have the final solution, then that will, it won't look like this, of course. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and switch back on over to this uh, design portion of the review. So one of the main things that I wanted to cover is that our helmet is designed so that way the hardware can be easily replaced, okay? The components are modular in that sense. Uh, if you're purchasing the ICRE model, which is currently our lowest model, which doesn't come with the front camera or the rear cameras or the heads-up display, then, and you wanted to upgrade and let's say, get you a front camera first and then go to the heads-up display and rear cameras, you can do that incrementally um, as you, know, you get additional funds and with the support of our tech team and our hands-on review videos that will be posted, you will be able to install the hardware yourself, okay? Um, so with this design, again, this is the front attachment for the front action camera, okay? Um, you guys already know pretty much all the specs. If you have any questions about some of the specs, go ahead and visit our website. Um, all the information is there in terms of uh, the performance of our front action camera. Um, again, so this is our front attachment, which does come off. I'm not sure if you can see these two screws. It's held on by these two screws. Okay, so you take those two screws out, that pops off. Okay, then as we spin it around, okay, now you can see the rear of the helmet, okay, which is so this is our rear piece shell attachment, okay? It covers everything else in terms of electronics on the helmet. Um, it's held on by the same screws that you saw on the front attachment, 
Um, but this rear uh, attachment piece is held on by eight screws, okay? Two on the side, two on the top, two on the bottom here, and then another two on this side, okay? As you can see, we have our cameras mounted in there. Um, and we'll get to that in our uh, second or third review when we touch on our uh, rear camera stitching, okay? But for right now, we'll go ahead and set that aside, okay? Uh, some other things I want to, to point out to you guys uh, and uh, have you guys notice. Here you'll see um, this tape to the side. These are antennas. These are antennas for our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, capabilities okay and then here which again speaks to our uh, ease of installation this is our MIPI cable for our front action camera okay here you can see probably that it is going in through this slot here which feeds directly to the front um, so that way you can easily uh, remove this cable and or install the cable if you already don't have uh, the front camera uh, available, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to point out, okay? Again, we have some cables going in here. Um, we do have our microphone, I'm not sure if you can see that, but we do have a microphone that is installed right here, okay? Which has uh, very, very good feedback. And um, of course, in this setting, the feed feedback is gonna be pretty good because there's no wind noise. Um, but once you get uh, outside and we do our uh, beta videos and we'll do some other videos uh, to show the functionality of that and um, just how good it is picking up the system is uh, recognizing your voice even in uh, some windy conditions, okay? And speaking on windy conditions and to kind of close out the design portion of this review, uh, we have, with every helmet, we have a uh, neck roll that is installed on uh, an optional course if you want to put it on or not, but it does come standard with every helmet model. Um, so that way uh, it can help uh, reduce, uh, you know, uh, wind noise, of course, and help in uh, some of the, the winter months, okay? So that is it for our in-depth helmet review, okay? I didn't want to spend too much time on it, but I did want to cover those things for those who did not um, know, you know, certain things about the helmet, okay? Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and jump on over to the next section of this helmet review, which is our functionality. So let's go ahead and jump into the functional portion of this helmet review. Um, again, really quick. Um, the system is now booted up, okay? Uh, we actually have the uh, front camera running right now. You should be able to see that back here on the screen. You see me waving uh, to the camera. Okay, I'll pick that up and move that around, okay? Just so you can see that it is functioning, okay? Again, this is our front action camera, okay? So, um, yeah, so again, the system is up and operational, as you can see. Uh, the sound will be coming out of this speaker here that we have uh, tied into our system through the USB audio adapter cable I mentioned earlier, okay? Um, and then again, we have the helmet microphone system, which is also tied into the board. So all the commands that I'll be giving the helmet will be going through this microphone system, um, and then we'll, any audio feedback will come out of the speaker, okay? This headset is connected to my uh, camera there, so uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, with our voice command, uh, the system is designed so that way it will always work offline. So those commands that you would typically give it, like you know, record my ride, which is a command that we have uh, tied into the system right now, it's programmed. Um, that will always function regardless of whether you have cell connection, right? Because you're telling the system to do something that it's already programmed to do. The commands that won't work because you definitely need a cell reception to, to complete these commands are commands such as, uh, what is the weather, okay? Um, those types of commands will not work unless you have a cell reception, uh, some kind of internet connection, 
which would be going through uh, your mobile device, okay? So wanted to kind of cover that and get that out of the way. Um, the other thing is, is that with this being a completely custom piece of hardware, we wanted it to feel more custom. So with that, the we've also programmed this helmet to uh, be able to recognize who you are. And when you go through the initial setup and into your name, into the system, your helmet will recognize that. And you'll hear that in a second. This helmet has been programmed to recognize the name James. And so when uh, we run the commands, this is what you will hear when this the helmet goes through its initial boot process and then once it gets to um, uh, showing you your rear field of view uh, through your heads-up display, this is what you will hear once all systems are uh, good and have been checked out, okay? Welcome, James. I've checked all I see our systems and everything is functional. You are clear to ride as soon as you're ready. I'll await further commands. Have a safe ride. Okay. So, you know, we added that little feature in there. We thought it was pretty cool. Uh, hopefully you do as well. Um, so, yeah. So that is, again, what you will hear when you boot your helmet up. And <clears throat> let's go ahead and jump into some of the program commands that we have. Um, so if I grab the helmet here and I tell the helmet to um, call emergency. Calling emergency. Okay. So you hear that um, with every command that you give the helmet, the helmet will give you an auto, audible feedback so that way you know that the system did receive and process that command. Okay. Especially for things like the next command that I'm going to give it um, where you don't see your front camera feed on the heads up display. Okay. That will never show because it's not safe, number one, and it's really not needed. You know, wherever you point your head is where uh, it's going to record. Okay. So if I say record my ride. Ride recording started. Okay. And then that's going to happen until you give it the command to stop. Okay. So right now it's doing that. As it's doing that, it's saving that information to the system. So that way when you get done writing and you get home or whatever, and you want to pull that, that footage up, you can do so. Just navigate to the specified folder and you'll be able to pull up that recording. Okay. And then I give it the command. Stop recording. Recording stopped. Okay, so now again, with every command, you'll get that audible uh, response, letting you know that the system did receive and process it. Okay, and now, uh, so one of the uh, other commands uh, before I'll do this command to kind of close out the AI voice recognition tutorial part of this video is um, with our media playback. Okay. Um, what we've also done with the system is we wanted to make sure that we took as much of the load off of your phone as possible. So when you're streaming music um, from your Bluetooth, um, <clears throat> that is causing a drain on your battery, especially if you're doing it constantly and you're riding and going for longer rides than normal than just you know commuting back and forth to work. Um, that will put a strain on your battery among everything else that your mobile device is doing. So with this, you will be able to load, preload uh, those songs onto your helmet, and then you'll be able to play that directly from your helmet and not on your device. Um, you will have the option to stream if you want to, but um, you will have initially the option to play any of that music directly from your helmet, okay? So with this command, I'll give it, um, Play music. Round one, smoke. Okay, so you can hear that coming out of here. Okay. And let's try it again. Play music. Round one, smoke. Okay. 
And that pretty much wraps up this first episode of our full helmet review. Okay. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. And last but not least, please go support our Indiegogo campaign that we currently have. Uh, we do not get to the finish line without you guys. And um, yeah, so until next time, thank you.